Welcome back to Rock the JVM. I'm Daniel, and in this video, we're going to continue exploring Scala 3 features with enums. Now, this video will assume that you know some Scala 2 fundamentals because at the moment of this recording in September 2020, Scala 3 isn't even out yet, so I'm going to assume that you know some Scala 2 fundamentals. We're going to write a bit of code here in this video. And also, I'm going to assume that you have a recent version of IntelliJ IDEA or an equivalent development environment that supports the experimental Scala 3 version at the moment of this recording, which is under the code name Dottie. Now, as a recommendation, I will recommend that you code with me in this video, and whenever you need to refresh your memory on enums in Scala 3, just refer back to this video or to its written form at rockthejvm.com forward slash blog with the link in the description. All right, so that being said, let's get back to our development environment, and I'm using IntelliJ version 2020.2. So if I hit about here, I have Community Edition 2020.2 with support for Dottie. And uh, if you want to create a Dottie project, you go to File, New Project, and here you would select Scala and Dottie, given the fact that you have the Scala plugin installed with IntelliJ, which I suppose you do, given you're a Scala programmer. So once you hit Scala and Dottie, you can feel free to continue with the rest of the wizard. You can name this project however you like. Test Dottie project or something along those lines and then click finish once you're done. Now I'm here in a uh, project that I've already created and I created this class that I'm going to turn into an object in case we need to test something. And I'm going to hit main so that IntelliJ auto completes this method for me just in case we need to show some things to the console. Now in this video, we're going to discuss enums which took a long time for Scala to adopt because in a very famous fashion, Scala 2 had no support for enums. We had to bend over backwards to support it. We need to we needed to extend a special kind of type and then we needed to say val things equals value, which was a pretty weird construct. Probably one of the weirdest parts of Scala 2. But finally, Scala has first class enums like any standard programming language. So let me define an enum. So I'm gonna say enum, which is now a proper keyword. I'm gonna name this permissions because we're going to define a few versions of permissions. And if you want to define an enum with a uh, potential set of values, you use case, and then you would uh, sequence your potential values of type permission. So I'm going to use read, comma, write, and then exec. And I'm also going to add none here. So when you define something like this, the compiler automatically creates the following. It creates a sealed class called permissions with a bunch of methods that I'm going to describe next. And it will also create these values, read, write, exec, and execute, or none, as I defined here. These values will extend permissions and they will be constants, all right? And you will be able to access those from the permissions companion object, which will also be automatically generated. So if you want to define, let's call this read as having the type permissions, you would access the read field of the permissions enum by saying permissions dot read. So there you go. This is how you would use an enum. Now there is one case here, the case keyword, which might or might not have been needed here for the Scala grammar, but we can't be too picky. So enums are now first class and we can use them as in Java or other languages as we did here. Now under the hood, as I mentioned earlier, the compiler generates a sealed class and these four well-defined values in its companion object. Now the next thing that I'm going to talk about is to define enums with arguments because as was expected enums can also have arguments and the constants that we defined here will have to be declared with a given uh, well-defined expression so i'm going to define an enum let's call this permissions with bits let's call this permissions with bits or advanced permissions or something like that and um, as constructor arguments you would pass any kinds of arguments that you like i'm going to pass a bit, st uh, bit stream as an int. And here uh, inside the curly braces, I can define my potential values here of permissions. And if you want to define your potential values here inside this enum, you would say case read, 
and you would have to say extends permissions with bits and then you would pass in this argument let's say four like the binary one zero zero okay you would have to define another case for write which extends permissions with bits and you would pass another argument here I'm going to use two for zero one zero and case exec extends permissions with bits with another value so zero 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 no bits and uh, zero zero one actually I'm going to set a bit that was for none so I'm going to use case none extends permissions with bits with the value zero so no bit set now this construct is a little bit boilerplatey because you would have to say case and then extends with uh, the enum name again with your proper argument in Java you would have to do a very simple construct read with the argument for write with the argument two, exec with the argument one and none with the argument zero but we can't be too picky we can't complain in uh, this uh, example we have enum with four possible values and they're being treated as first class elements in Scala we are satisfied all right now we can access the fields of these permissions with bits instances by using the dot notation and the accessor notation as we're used to from any other kinds of classes so I would be able to say well let's call this read to as permissions with bits as permissions with bits dot read and um, I'm going to access the bit string of read two as read two dot bits for example now notice here that this constructor argument here is only a field and therefore accessible by the accessor syntax if you declare it a val or a var uh, just like any other kind of class all right now, the next thing that I'm going to talk about is fields and methods. So enums can contain fields and methods just like a normal class because they are compiled to a sealed class after all. So uh, we can define them inside the enum body and we can access them with the regular dot accessor syntax. So if I define, for example, inside this enum a method, let's call this two hex, which returns a string. And uh, the implementation, let's assume it's the regular Java implementation, integer dot two hex string. And I'm going to pass in my int here, bits. All right. This can be accessed by the permissions with bits instances that we use in our code. So I'm going to use hex string as read two dot two hex. All right. So this is as if you called a method or on any other kind of instance uh, that you normally use with your classes. All right. And uh, you can define fields of any kind. You can define values and variables very interestingly. So one interesting thing is that we can also define variables, vars, inside this enum. And uh, this might come in conflict with the immutable or immovable aspect of enums. I would certainly not recommend uh, creating variables. So can create variables. Don't recommend it. Because it will be like defining global variables free for anyone in any point of the code to change. All right. So this is something that I would definitely not recommend. Now, a nice addition to enums is the ability to create companion objects where we can also add quote unquote static fields and methods, perhaps smart constructors. So I'm going to define an object here that I'm going to call permissions with bits. And inside I can define a method like from bits with an uh, argument bit string like an int. And this will return a permissions with bits. And here you would do bit checking. For example, say, uh, if the second bit of this bit string is a uh, uh, is set to one and so on and so forth and you would return the proper instance of permissions with bits I'm just going to be really lazy and I'm gonna return none and obviously we can call this method from the companion object just as we would on a normal class all right, so this is pretty standard. An enum is being treated much like a regular class. The next thing that we're gonna talk about is the standard API. 
because enums come with some predefined utility methods. First, the ability to check the index of a given enum value inside the order of definitions. So um, read is considered the permissions at index 0, write at index 1, exec at index 2, and none at index 3. And you can map these two integers by saying, for example, let's call this first as permissions dot read dot ordinal. The ordinal method returns an integer defining the index in which you have defined them um, inside your enum. Okay, so this is how you would convert an enum to an int. Second, you have the ability to fetch all the possible values of an enum type, perhaps to uh, iterate over all of them or to consider all of them at once. So I'm going to define, let's call this all permissions as permissions dot values. And the values here will return an array of permissions. And uh, the type inference in IntelliJ is pretty bad. It says it's any, but the compiler actually knows that this is an array of values. If we were to do uh, all permissions dot for each print line, this would not only compile, but it would also print all the possible values inside permissions. So if you right click and run this application, you would see all the values here, read, write, exec, and none. So this will be an array with all the possible values. So this was the second thing. The third thing is the ability to convert a string into one of your enum values. So I'm going to define, let's call this read permission as permissions dot value of. So this is the standard conversion or parsing uh, that you would apply to strings like read. And this will return permissions dot read here. Okay. And uh, this will be IntelliJ infers this as any but it, it's actually of type permissions. Obviously, if I click, where is it build and recompile the code is uh, very happy with my code. Now, bear in mind that this uh, this particular example that I've written here, value of read, is only applicable for enums that do not have constructor arguments. All right. So you've learned another powerful tool in the Scala 3 arsenal. I hope you like it. Let me know in the comments and I will create more Scala 3 videos. Speaking of which, if you want to see more videos from Rock the JVM, go ahead and click the like button for me and subscribe to the channel. I post these every week and uh, give me your feedback in the comments. I'm dying to see them and I read every single comment. And uh, in the meantime, follow us on Twitter and LinkedIn for fresh updates on upcoming material and uh, check out the Rock the JVM website. We have tons of material like this, including the written versions of all the videos on the channel. Until next time, Daniel signing off.